All right, I'm going to go through the steps to create a self-checking practice worksheet uh, in Google Sheets. And uh, what I'm going to start with is opening up a blank Google Sheets. And uh, I'm going to take the first couple um, grid spaces here, the first couple cells, and I'm going to merge them together. And this is where I'm going to put my title. So I'm going to do format, merge cells merge all because I want them to merge up and down and across. And then I'm going to just change the font there and make it something larger so that students can read it. I'm going to make it centered and I'm going to align it in the center of the cells. And this is going to be solving systems using elimination. You can make it about whatever you want. If you're a language arts teacher, you can make it about, um, you know, is it a noun or a verb? Uh, if you're a social studies teacher, you, you could make it about, you know, which state capital, what's the capital of each state. Um, anything, anything will work here that has just like a simple answer. We don't want anything that has a complex answer, like an entire sentence or a paragraph. We're looking for something that we can check simply. Uh, all right. And then I'm going to maybe fill in the background here. Okay. Next, I'm going to do my directions. So I'm going to take some more uh, cells and I'm going to format merge the cells in all directions. And for my directions, I'm going to just type here directions. They're going to solve each system using the elimination method. Show your work on notebook, paper, or, or a dry erase board. You will need to insert your work for each question on the second sheet. I'll go over how they're going to do that in a couple minutes. Um, if, oh, and I'm going to have them enter the X coordinate and Y coordinate separately using no spaces, commas, or parentheses. If your answer is not a whole number, please use a decimal. And then I want to tell them how they're going to know if they're right. If the answer box turns green, your answer is correct. All right. So you can see I can't see all of the text that I just wrote, and that's because uh, it's not on the right, like the, it's going all the way across forever and ever. So I want to change that to text wrap. So I'm going to, I'm selecting the, the cell format, text wrapping wrap. And then you just kind of have to look and see, it doesn't really quite look like there's enough space for all my directions there. So I'm just going to make this larger. There we go. And then I would like that to be aligned in the center, not at the bottom. Perfect. If you want the directions to be larger, you can just, you know, make your font larger and then adjust as needed to make sure uh, that they can see all the directions. All right. So once I have my directions, then I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to have a question box and you could just have one answer box, but my answer has two parts. It has an X coordinate and it has a Y coordinate. So I'm going to have two um, two answer boxes basically. And then I'm going to make this question box larger. I don't think I need to make my X or Y coordinate boxes any larger because they're just going to type a single number in those spots. All right. And then I'm going to make these the same font that I used for the title, make it a little larger so that it's easy for students to read and then adjust your cells. There's a really cool feature if you double click, so you can see I'm kind of hovering between C and D, column C and column D. When you have that double arrow, if you double click, it automatically sizes to the size that you need. So basically it makes it just as wide as the wording that you have there. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna do four problems for this example, but obviously you could put as many questions as you want. So I'm gonna grid in just those first four uh, rows below the word question. And then I'm going to make these rows a little bit longer. So I'm going to just drag each one down and make it twice as long as it was before. So I'm taking the bottom of the six and I'm dragging it to the bottom of the seven. I'm taking the bottom of the seven, I'm dragging it to the bottom of the eight. That way I can make sure that they're at least relatively 
all the same size. I'm not really concerned if they're exactly the same size, but they'll at least be relatively the same size. All right, maybe I'll add a little color here. And I really don't think I need this space here, so I'm gonna remove that row. So I, I right click, delete row, and now we've got it all right there. All right, so I'm gonna also make this font bigger. There we go, that looks a lot better. Okay, so let's go ahead and type in our first question. I'm taking a worksheet that I've used in the past and I'm just converting it to this type of uh, uh, format. So I've got the worksheet right here and I went ahead and typed in the answer so I wouldn't have to calculate them right now. So I'm gonna take my first question, which is X plus Y equals three and X minus Y equals negative nine. And I'm gonna type that into the first uh, cell, question cell. So right here, I've got x plus y equals 3. And you can't go down, so you, I can't put them on top of each other. So instead, I'm just going to put a semicolon, and I'm going to put the other question, the other part, which I think was x minus y equals negative 9. I'm going to double check that. x minus, yeah. All right. Now, obviously, this font is way too small, so I'm going to make that much larger. And I'm also going to center it. And I like it to be in the center of the cell as well. So that looks nice. All right, so that's my first one. And I'm going to go ahead and continue filling in uh, the rest there. I'm just going to pause the video and I'll uh, start it up again once I have this filled in. All right, so now I have all of those filled in there. For some reason my border has disappeared, so I'm just going to put my borders back around there. Um, and one thing I do want to point out, I probably should have done that before I... Um, did this, but you can select multiple cells and then format them all the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and format my X and Y coordinate answer cells. Um, and I have them all selected and I'm going to go ahead and make them all the same font. I'm going to make them all the same size. I'm going to make them all centered and the text aligned in the center of the cell. So instead of having to do each one separately, you can do them all at the same time. All right. So now let's get to the kind of the point of this activity, which is for us to um, be able to signal to students whether they have the answer correct or not. And we're gonna use conditional formatting to do that. So I'm gonna go back to my worksheet here and I'm gonna get the answers for my first question. So the first question has an answer of negative three for the X coordinate and six for the Y coordinate. So I'm gonna go ahead and right now I'm gonna type in negative three for the X coordinate and six for the Y coordinate. We're not gonna leave that there, but I'm just gonna put it there for right now. All right, I'm gonna select my answer cell for the X coordinate, the negative three cell, and I'm gonna to go to format, conditional formatting, okay? It's gonna apply just to this cell, okay? And for this cell, we want to make a rule that says, if this cell is equal to negative three, the answer, then we want it to turn green because we want, green means they got it right. So it's already defaulted to green, and we're gonna say done. And then we have to put another rule, we're still in the same cell. This is the cell, this is what it's gonna do if it's not negative three. So we're gonna say is not equal to negative three. We're gonna change that to be red. So now that I have those conditional formatting rules there, if I come over here and I make this something else, watch what happens, turns red. Anything I type here is gonna be red except the answer negative three. Now, one thing I want to check is if I put something equal. So you can see I put negative 3.0 still equal. See if we put oops, negative 3 over 1. So it doesn't like the fraction, which is why I asked them to put their answer as a decimal. So negative 3, there we go. All right, so now we're going to conditionally format our Y coordinate. So again, I'm going to go here to add another rule. This is applying to the C5 you can see there, that's the cell, C5. And I'm gonna start with C5 is equal to, if it's equal to six, I want it to be green, done. And then I'm gonna add a second rule there. Same cell, C5. If it is not equal to six, then we want it to turn red. And you can see there it's six, so it's green. If I change it, it turns red. Okay, and then when you are done, you wanna delete obviously your answers out and they'll both be red because what's in the cell is not equal to the answer. Um, so they will all be red when you share this with students. 
All right. Um, so now let's talk about, you would do the same thing on all these. I'll do one more actually. So on the second question, my answer is 11, three. So I'm going to have 11 as the X coordinate and three as the Y coordinate. Let's go through that conditional formatting one more time. I'm going to select the cell and then if it's already open, you can just go right here. But if not, you go to format conditional formatting, but I already have it open over here. So I'm just going to hit add another rule. You can see it's applying just to this cell B6 and we want that to be is equal to 11. We want it to be green, which is what it's already defaulted to done. Add another rule, same cell B6. If it is not equal to 11, so anything except 11, so any wrong answer we want to turn red, done. So it's 11, so it's green. If I change it to 10, it changes to red. And then same thing here, I select the cell, add a rule. I like to start with the, the yes rule, is equal to three. We want it to be green, done. Now your no rule, if it's wrong, not equal to three, change that def uh, to that red color, done. So again, because three is typed in there, it's green, but as soon as I type in something else, it will turn red. And again, you wanna delete those answers out um, and all of those boxes will be red when you share with students. Okay, so something I had in my directions that I wanna talk about is I had in my directions that I wanted students to insert a picture of their work when they, uh, onto the second sheet. So I'm gonna add a second sheet here and maybe we'll change the name and call this activity and we'll call this workspace or something like that. Okay, so then I'm gonna put right here, I'm gonna tell them how they're gonna insert their work. So I'm gonna merge these cells together. And I'm going to say, please insert a photo of your work for each question. To do so, they're going to go to insert, oops, go to insert, image, covers, it says cover cells. I want to make sure I get that right. Insert image, image over cells. Okay, so I want that to say image over cells and then camera. So those are what their directions are going to be. I need to make this text wrap so they can see all those words. There we go. I'm maybe going to highlight that. So I know that they can see it and I'm definitely going to make it bigger, which means I'm probably going to have to make this bigger. All right. Just centering everything. I think I still have room to make that larger, so I'm going to do so. There we go. All right. That looks good. Okay. So let me show you what they're going to do here. I'm going to go back and really fast, I'm going to show my work for the first question. Okay, it's not great, but you'll get the point. All right, so I have my work on a little dry erase board and I'm gonna show you how they can insert their, um, their work. So uh, we're gonna follow these directions, insert, image, image over cells, and they're gonna go to camera. So you're gonna see me, and I'm gonna hold up my work. There we go, got everything in there. And then I'm gonna hit camera, and once I can see, okay, I can see the whole image, that looks good, so I'm gonna hit insert. There we go, so, and then maybe, they might say question one or something. It would be nice if they did that, but they're not necessarily going to. And then they can just insert another one over here. So let's do question two. So I'm gonna select something. We'll just pretend like my uh, dry erase board has different work on it, it doesn't, but insert image, image over cells, camera. Just pretend like this says something else this time, different work, hit the camera, and insert 
and there's my work. You can also make the photo larger or smaller. You can drag it around, you can drag it underneath each question number. You could even have the question numbers already there and then just have the students put it underneath. You could already have the question one, two, three, and four. So that's a pretty awesome little tool. Um, if your student uses um, a dry erase board and a dry erase marker, I think it's easier to read than just doing like notebook paper with a pencil or a pen. Um, this dry erase marker that I, you saw in, in the video here is from, uh, sorry, dry erase board is from Target uh, in the dollar spot. It literally cost a dollar and I just put a sheet of white paper in it. You could also put grid paper in it, graph paper in it. Um, you can also make a dry erase board with a sheet protector. In fact, I'm pretty much planning to send my students home with a homemade dry erase board made out of sheet protectors, um, just in the case that they're uh, working from home. Uh, at some point, we're starting full go, uh, you know, in a couple weeks, but just in case, uh, they'll have it at home. And uh, dry erase markers are usually on most kids' supply lists, I think, at, at this day and age. So. So that's how they can show their work there. Um, and then um, they can check their answers there as well. The one thing I really like about this specifically is they could have the X coordinate right and the Y coordinate wrong. And then they at least know that they're partially right. And they can hopefully go back and figure out, you know, why their other coordinate isn't correct. Um, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, you, you can just post this in Google Classroom. Uh, that would be for a separate video if you don't know how to share it with students. But that is a self-checking assignment in Google uh, Sheets. Thanks for watching.